Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. After endless amounts of patience, Baiju is finally a playable character. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how good a Constellation Zero Baiju is with the three star catalyst, The Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. Baiju, the owner of the much esteemed Boo Boo Pharmacy, is here to perform his checkup on all the player base's Boo Boos. My Baiju is at level 90, and he is using the 3 star weapon The Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. For his artifacts, he is using the 2 piece Vorukasha's Glow and 2 piece Tenacity of the Millilith. He has an Energy Recharge Timepiece, HP% percent Goblet, and HP% percent Circlet. He is, of course, at Constellation Zero throughout this entire video, and his talents are at 6, 9, and 9. <coughs> Let's check in to our appointment with his normal attacks, the classics of acupuncture. Fitting for its name, Baiju pokes and prods his enemies with a quick flurry of dendro jabs. Expectedly, this is barely doing any damage with his current HP focus build. Similar to taking vitals at a doctor's office, it's definitely not the focus of most appointments. Let's instead move on to his elemental skill. Universal Diagnosis Baiju's favorite snake companion, Gossamer, has a sprite conjured from her which, after wiggling around for a bit, comes back and heals your party. With my current HP focused build, Baiju's elemental skill is healing for a very substantial 8 to 9,000 damage, and it even heals the entire party with just the click of a single elemental skill. As for how much damage it does, well, let's just say it makes me sick to my stomach with how disgusting these numbers are. Truly horrifying. Up next is his elemental burst, Holistic Revivification. There's a lot to talk about with his elemental burst. In total, it creates 6 instances of his shield, every 2.5 seconds. And when the shield expires, it heals the on-field character, and then a concerningly green-colored glob is expelled from your character, which coats a nearby enemy in Dendro. Here's our patient's chart that will help summarize what his burst can do. Each shield provides an 829 hit point shield and each time it heals for 5,385 hit points when it expires. In total, it ticks 6 times, with each tick appearing to have no ICD for applying Dendro. Over its 6 ticks, it provides a total of 4,973 hit points worth of shielding, and 32,307 hit points of base healing. This is a very good prescription for keeping its patients healthy. As for his full kit damage, it's actually negligible damage. Don't worry though, I will have a brief section later showcasing a DPS build for him. Instead of focusing on his damage, let's move on to his damage buffing capabilities. For his damage buffing capabilities, it mostly lies in his second passive, and it's also why he's built with so much HP. For every 1000 hit points, he provides 2% more damage to bloom type damage, and 0.8% to aggravate and spread damage for up to 50,000 HP. It provides these buffs to characters that have been healed by his ultimate. Let's see how much it buffs Kuki's hyper bloom damage. Well, Kuki's Hyper Boom damage with a pure EM build went from 25,429 damage to 29,288 damage, a 15% increase to her Hyper Boom damage. Not too shabby, all things considered. Next, let's also see how much it buffs Sino's Aggravate damage. Looking at Sino's first buffed elemental skill, it went from 22,451 damage to 26,552 damage. A reasonable but modest increase. Keep in mind this is with both the Thrilling Tales buff as well as the buff from his passive too. The shield, while flimsy, is great at increasing Sino's resistance to stagger as well, 
as the hit that breaks the shield won't flinch your character. This is a very nice quality of life feature for on-field aggravate characters. Expanding a bit on the chart from earlier, we can see that my bite duel with his 49,385 hit points provides a total of 98.8% more bloom damage and 39.5% more aggravate and spread damage. But let's of course see how a free-to-play friendly team performs with this Constellation Zero by Jewel. Here I have a standard kooky cutter hyperbloom team, with everyone else on the team using reasonable 4-star weapons. <laughs> Some of the hyperblooms are hitting for 40,896 damage, and all the additional healing and dendro application that follows is a really nice addition to this team. Let's also take this team for a quick run through Abyss 12 while I talk more about Baijuu. So far, Baijuu feels like an incredible quality of life dendro character. Every team that I've tried him on, he just feels good to use. Not only does he provide resistance to stagger via his shield, he provides a great amount of healing, and even a damage buff for dendro related reactions. In some way, he feels like a dendro Zhongli, providing incredible survivability and a universal damage buff for dendro related teams. Now I have three main complaints about him. First, he has a rather long 2-ish second burst animation. Next, his burst costs 80 energy. And finally, he doesn't apply that much off-field dendro. With these three flaws out of the way though, Baizu feels like a great character at Constellation Zero. He is the comfiest of dendro supports by a long stretch, and really does it all. And if you couldn't tell by now, based on the footage in the background, Abyss 12 top half was an absolute cakewalk with his team. I tried each chamber literally twice, and 12-1-1 took 72 seconds, 12-2-1 took 55 seconds, and 12-3-1 took 60 seconds. Let's also take a quick look at how much damage he can do with a DPS build. For this, I'm using the Gilded Dreams build with a Refinement 5 Widsit. Unsurprisingly, he is able to single cycle the Regisvine with the Widsith's buff with relative ease. For a free to play friendly team, we of course go back to the Hyper Bloom team being pretty much everyone's best option nowadays. Admittingly, his attacks are very short ranged and he doesn't really feel great as an on fielder because of how stubby his attacks are and he doesn't move forward much when he does his attacks, therefore it's actually hard to consistently hit moving enemies with it. But despite that, he can be a usable on field driver or spread DPS for those that that really want to build him like that. And yes, he works just fine in Nilo Bloom teams or honestly any Dendro related team. He also works quite well with spread DPS characters, and a really interesting archetype is a triple Dendro team with Alhatham, Ortignari, Nahida, Baiju plus an Electro of choice. Anyway, Baiju is a very solid character at Constellation Zero, and it's just an incredibly comfy Dendro support character. And I feel like lately MiHoYo has been pushing us towards a more survival focused meta. Let me know what you think about our brand new playable sickly doctor in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This as I went to lose, signing out.